You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Beautiful spring morning. Some people are out working early. I don't know about you, but uh, this pandemic has brought out, how should we say, an internet addiction. It seems too easy to make purchases online with Shopping Channel, Walmart.ca, Princess Auto even is online. So I'm going to have to watch that. So brothers and sisters, prepare yourself to celebrate the sacred mysteries of its called mind, our sin. You were sent to heal the country of heart. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ have mercy. You received at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and with you. Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles were being questioned by the high priest before the council. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamal, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to the members of the council, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Gilles rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, because of this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him, and when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, the apostles rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. The Word of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. 
one thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. No one lives by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 men. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. If you were following along at home with the missile left, you may have noticed that I added a word in the gospel going to an older translation that I believe is more accurate. It goes along with what I was going to preach about actually, because I was going to preach about how today, very often, preachers will minimalize this gospel story in the sense of the miracle that Jesus had performed. Very often we hear it talked about in the sense of the miracle of sharing, that all the people who were there shared what they had, and that's how they were able to feed so many people with what little food they had. In other words, it downplays the actual miracle that Jesus performed multiplication of the loaves and fishes. 
Now the second part of this is something else that is often mismentioned, as it is actually, I believe, misinterpreted here and translated into our language in the Gospel. It says that there were 5,000 people. But the original is actually 5,000 men, which means there were also women and children, so that the miracle was even greater than feeding 5,000, would be more like 12, 14, 15,000, maybe even more. This, of course, being in the Gospel of John, is a Gospel story that is about the Eucharist and how Jesus continues to feed us with himself, with his body and blood, and how the multiplication takes place. Sometimes we can think of the great multitudes of people that may attend the Mass and think, oh dear Lord, we're not going to have enough hosts, we're going to run out of hosts. And usually there's far more than we need. I actually remember one time when I was uh, an altar server. I was helping a visiting priest at home with a funeral. And when I went to the tabernacle for him, as he was getting out of communion at this very large funeral, I retrieved this morion. And when I took the cover off, my heart sunk because there were very few hosts within the sporium. And I thought, he's surely going to run out. Because when I gave him the sporium, he gave me the empty one that he had consecrated at Mass. And there was still a large crowd coming forward for communion. After communion, he gave me the sporium back to put it back in the tabernacle. And to my surprise, I kid you not, it looked to be of the same amount as what I had handed it to him. So immediately I thought of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. You know, that Jesus continues to perform these miracles within his church. So today we may wonder, you know, where is Jesus and where are his miracles? when we're in this time of pandemic, when his people are suffering from the solitude of not being able to have company of loved ones and friends. And they're suffering as well from this Eucharistic fast that's been forced upon them, that they can only receive spiritually. They cannot receive the actual body and blood of Christ. That is, as is given to us in the sacrament of the Eucharist. So we may ask, and the answer would be, I suppose, that Jesus is right where he's always been, watching over us, walking with us, feeding us with perhaps what we truly need. Time to reflect on him, to reflect on our relationship with him. One of the things that miracles can do, the negative effects, is they can draw undue attention to the person that they're associated with. We go back into the history of the saints, and many of them were, for want of a better term, no pun intended, plague with people that would flock to them because <clears throat> of their miracles. They were coming to them and not going to the Lord. They weren't turning to the Lord in prayer, they weren't turning to the Lord in devotion. They were putting their devotion into the saint. We see an indication of this as well in Jesus. In his human form, not in his glorified form, because this gospel is prior to his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And we're told that they wanted to make him king. 
They wanted to make him an earthly king to look after their earthly needs. But Jesus needed to fulfill his Father's will, and that was to become the heavenly king so that he could fulfill our spiritual needs. Not long from now, we will be celebrating Pentecost when Christ gives his church with the Holy Spirit. And it's through that power of the Spirit that Jesus is able to multiply the loaves and fishes. Life giving. Remember the creation of God sent his Spirit over the waters. And through the presence of his Spirit, the earth came alive. Life entered into the waters. Life entered into our planet. And so that same Spirit is what changes our ordinary bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. That life-giving spirit. Now even though, as I said, you're not able to partake of this banquet physically, and receive physically the body and blood of Christ, you can still make that spiritual communion. You can pray that he will come into your heart, you can pray that he will help to transform you into the disciple that you were called to be. And what would that be? Well, very simply, as we see in our first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, even after being flogged and once again ordered not to speak in the name of Jesus, they were happy to have suffered for his name, and they went right back to preaching his name. Preaching that he is the Messiah, that he is our salvation. And so now you have an opportunity to reflect on what it means to be a disciple of Christ, what it means to be one who is called to evangelize, one who is called to be a missionary disciple, to go forth and to proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers that remain within the secret of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe you, through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer, fruit of the earth, and work with human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Pray, brothers and sisters, that thy sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with possible joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending name of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Christian our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Wilfred Cormier, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not that you shall be under my roof, but will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that, redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I believe today is the day that at 2 o'clock this afternoon we're asked to pause for a moment of solidarity with all Canadians um, over the tragedy that is taking place in Nova Scotia and we're asked to wear red as well to show that solidarity. And if you uh, happen to have attended World Youth Day in 2002 with the diocese and your t-shirt is still in good condition, it is red and it also has a Canadian maple leaf on it. You know, the, I was going to say flag, but it has the maple leaf as well as the cross. So I believe that would be very appropriate to wear today. I'm actually wearing mine, mine from 2000. Well, one of them, because I have two. I don't know where the other one is, but anyway, I got one. The Lord be with you. Bow down to the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by his redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the whole land of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Mass is ended.